Holy crap, we're back again already. We've got week five for you here. Feels like uh, I just finished casting week four, but um, yeah, I truly did <laughs> yesterday. Finished it off and uh, uploaded that, and now I'm on to week five. I don't know when this is going to come out. Been super fucking busy lately. God damn. Um, I've had three different jobs in the past two weeks. Just to let, just just to give you an idea of um, how hectic my life has been right now. Um, all at the same company, but they've been bouncing me around like a beach ball at a concert. It is. A little bit out of control. Um, hopefully, I'm in a position now that I'm going to stay at for a while, but um, that's kind of what happens, I guess, when you're working for a company that is uh, completely disorganized and uh, out of control. So, um, they find somebody who puts in the work and tries to uh, you know work overtime try, tries to make things better and they they just want to hold on to you and uh, they, they throw you around I mean they they try you out in a bunch of different locations try to figure out where the where, where they can put you and best utilize you and that's been kind of my experience anyway enough about me we're gonna get into this game now we got Bisu versus action like Bisu with that scout immediately after Pylon. He's thinking about going for a Nexus first. And he's got the full scout off here. He sees that there is a pool coming, but it's not the quickest pool. So he thinks he can get away with this quick Nexus and he will be able to get away with this as long as he throws down that forge here pretty quickly. Ooh, action picks off the robe there. A very nice play by him. That moving shot, not easy to pull off. Done a great job, though. Wait a second. What the hell is going on here? Action pulling five drones. He's sending them straight across the map after killing that probe. Um, Bisu has no idea that this is coming. He's going to dive on this cannon. Try to finish that off, it looks like. Try to kill this cannon. Try to stop this from going down. And then the links will just come through and absolutely crush this. Let's see if he can kill this cannon in time. Wow, this cannon is going to go down so fast, actually. The probes are on the way, but they have nothing to mineral glide to, so they're not doing a good job of getting in front of these drones. What a counter here by action to the early uh, Nexus here. Now the Lings have arrived. They're going to start picking off probes. This is ridiculous, ridiculous gameplay. I'm really surprised. The way that Action's played this out, he can run by with two links. He's going to get into the main there. He doesn't go for the Photon Cannon. He should be able to get a bunch of probes here in the main as well. There's only four probes here against three probes. so Or only four probes against three links. So uh, a, potentially a lot of damage here in the main as well. Yeah, he's going to get a probe already. He's definitely going to get more as well. There you go. Action in a great position here. Wow, I've never seen that. In all my years of casting Brood War, I have never seen that type of play from Action. Or from any Zerg player, excuse me, what Action did right there. Uh, sending the drone straight across the map, just killing that cannon. My mind is spinning, actually. It's, it's, it's crazy to think that you can actually pull that off. Uh, that actually works. Um, I guess maybe that's just a a special situation. Like when you when you actually pick off the probe early, um, and the opponent is going for Nexus first, maybe you can pull that off. Because I think if Bisu just drops two cannons there, you know, if he sees the drones coming across the map, just drops a second cannon, and he should be fine. But um. 
God, this did so much damage for Action. Action actually getting a Hydro Left Stand, so he's going to follow this up with a bust. This seems to be the way a lot of Zerg players like to follow up early damage when going against Protoss. Just go for a bust, even if they don't end up ending the game with this bust, they can really get far ahead. They can transition out of it. They kill those first two buildings. Uh, if the Protoss player is not ready, they just die. Jump in on this cannon here. Action note, going to fall back now. That seemed a little bit uh, crazy there. It didn't even have link speed, so he throws away a few links, and now he's actually going to have to produce more in order to take care of that Zealot that's walking across now. Actually, Zealot's going to head back to the natural, so he doesn't need to worry about that for now. Bisu getting some scouting information at the moment, but he doesn't know about this Hydralis Den. He could absolutely lootly get wrecked here. Um, I think the thinking on this, on why Zerg players tend to go for a rush uh, Hydralis bust immediately after getting an advantage like this is that Protoss really has to count, cut some corners here. They really want to uh, cut cannons. They want to cut anything that they can to try and get their build back on track. Now, great surround here from action. Gonna get a couple of zealots very easily. Nice job with the pro. Man, action is so on point with this Zergling Micro. It's crazy. Absolutely wrecking those zealots of Bisu. And uh, like I was saying, the Protoss wants to skip some, uh, some tank here. They wanna skip some things like cannon. The extra cannon, you, you normally see Protoss throw down a second cannon uh, at the front here. Okay, he is actually going to get that second cannon. He has no scouting information, but I think he might just die. Actually, you just run right up here. Yeah, the Zealots, they have to run away. These links are going to breach the high ground, and uh, yeah, these Hydras should be able to take the win here. Bring down as many cannons, desperation cannons as he can, but this... Uh, Tight choke is actually going to work against Bisu in this situation because the Hydras can just kind of park here and fire away at these probes. They can't get any surface area at all. All of these probes are going to go down and then he can just walk right up here, start to shoot down these cannons. There's not really much that Bisu, 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 I keep saying Bisu, Bisu can do. Bisu taps out and action takes game number one. All right, a wild game to start off this week of KCM. Guys, I forgot through all of that craziness to pull up our lineup. There it is on your screen now. We've got a sick lineup here this week. Jadong even coming out. We've got Royal as well, so it should be a fantastic week. Light is coming out next. He's against Action. The winner of our first match here on Eclipse Action bottom left. Light in the top right. Starting out with a wall here. See if Action can take him down, man. I, I love what Action brought to that last game, man. He had a great idea bringing just five workers across the map to take out that cannon. I, I don't know if I'm just uh, completely out of the loop on that or... You know, maybe so other people are doing that, or they've done it before in the past, and I just haven't seen it, but that was really cool. Not something that I've seen before. Um, I've definitely seen people try to send links across the map all the time. People try to uh, use their early links to break these Nexus first builds, but never have I seen drones being pulled. It's kind of speaks to me like uh, these early SCV polls in Terran versus Protoss where the, er, the, the early Nexus ends up getting rushed down by a bunker and some Marines rallied across the map and just a whole bunch of pulled workers. But um, that was just really, really cool to me. I, I love to see new play like that now. Action taking a third base immediately. This has become really popular on this map, and 
It was kind of popularized here. It's also been used on some other maps as well. There is another three-player map or two-player map that this has become more popular on, but um, it really just... This this style of play is uh, is very popular on two and three player maps, um, and especially ones where there's not an easy third base look or third and fourth base location to take. Uh, specifically, the fourth base, which is right outside of the third, that's where uh, standard play really comes uh, in handy in this matchup when you're capable of taking a quick fourth base off of your third with defilers and lurkers but here it's just not possible that's why this new meta has evolved uh, action taking that third base right away playing sort of a zerg versus protoss build here a reminiscent of a zerg versus protoss build he is going to get into that layer and a quick spire still very similar Two versus Protoss build is just like a, a, a ZVP build where you go into Muta, basically. And then from there, we're going to get into Hydra, possibly Lurker, and maybe uh, just driving right past that Lurker build straight into Crazy Zerg. We're not quite sure yet. We'll see if Evolution Chambers end up coming down here. So far, just a couple creep colonies going to be added on. He knows that... This two racks is a big threat here. Uh, with that third base, you've got an extra location to defend. So I'm actually going to go ahead and preemptively start to build those sunken colonies, those, those uh, creep colonies, to make sure he has all of the defenses in order before this attack uh, reaches his natural or his third. Now, a little late on this third base sunken colonies so he needs to buy a little time he's doing that with the links right now but that sunken still not quite done uh-oh action looks like like delaying a little bit more is gonna save action from a, a potential bust at his third yeah that sunken is now done so a uh, light gonna be or action gonna be okay here light not gonna be able to break either location three sunkins at the natural two on that high ground at the third just because it is harder to uh, run up that ramp against the sunken colonies and fight rather than just run straight into the natural so he's only gonna need two there and he's done his due diligence here he's fended off this two barracks attack and like gonna move into the next stage of the game here he's just going to start throwing down more barracks and a queen's nest is on the way so queen's nest coming up that is going to be a very quick transition into hive here evolution chamber i think we're gonna have crazy zerg guys crazy zerg on the way here action loves this style I was wondering if we were going to see it once I saw the map Eclipse, and it seems like it's going to come out here. Uh, we haven't seen a Hydralis Den yet, and we've already got a Queen's Nest and an Evolution Chamber. That is almost certainly going to be a quick rush into Ultra. Action. Sharking around the map now with his muta, but he's not intending to deal any damage with this. Whoa, Hydra's Den. Okay, Hydra Den coming down. That is very interesting stuff. Will he go for Hydra's Defiler here? I feel like you don't need that early of an Evo Chamber if you're going Hydra Defiler. Um, maybe you do. Maybe I'm. Uh, not up to date on the latest and greatest Hydra Lurker or the, the, the Hydra Defiler builds, but um, I feel like you don't need that. Uh, we'll see if it ends up coming in handy here for action. Um, maybe he knows more than I do. Maybe he knows you need to have plus one range on Hydra or something like that just to get through 
the uh, marine medic armor. I feel like if you have plague, it doesn't matter. Um, Dark Swarm will defend you more than an armor will ever do. And a plague will deal more damage than Hydra's uh, will ever do. I mean, all you need is one damage. Once the Marines have been plagued, you just hit them one time. They should pop, no problem. Looks like Light looking to break into this natural. There's still quite a few Sunkins here. That's five Sunkins, man. Nothing to be messed around with. And with the... Uh, Mutas coming up as well. I think this should be held by action pretty well. Here comes another round of Mutas or of uh, Marines coming up here. Um, these Mutas are still fighting well. There's one last Sunken. There's only about five Marines here. He should be able to clean this. No problem. He's going to dive in at the last second. Only three Marines. <laughs> oh my goodness. Only three Mutas are left over. And action is just going to be taken out before he can even get his plan in motion here. All of his drones going down at the natural. The Muta's falling as well. GG. An anticlimactic and light going to take this game before action can put his plans into action, <laughs> into motion here. All right, guys, let's go into our next game. All righty then, here we go. Game number three, Light versus Best. We got Light here in the center right, Best in the bottom left. It is Monopoly, that triangular map. Three players, and of course the island in the middle. Pretty crazy map, honestly. Really hoping to see more of this map and that's really what this tournament is about watching the best players in the world compete in best of ones no mirror matchups on the newest maps in the asl get a sense of where they're th where they're at what they're thinking about these maps how they want to play things out of course they may be hiding some strategies for obvious reasons asl being the main one but you know, it's uh, it's still a good learning opportunity. It's still a good a preview as to what might be coming here in the future. Light. Going to be shocked to find a Nexus first here from Best. Actually, probably not that shocked. We'll see if he decides to pull the boys and rush this Nexus down. I don't think he's going to. He's got the factory on the way here. Um, it's still an option here for a little while longer. It is possible to uh, pull off this rush uh, when the first vulture is in production. You just pull the boys, send your 3-4 marines that you've managed to produce so far. He is producing a third marine, so it is a good sign that he may be considering attacking immediately across the map pulling his SCVs and going for a kill here on that Nexus, but we'll just have to wait and see a little bit longer whether that is the plan or not. Light, if he doesn't go for this, he will be a little bit behind here. Bez has cut a lot of corners. Still producing Marines, so I do think he will go for a push here. No SCVs have been pulled just yet. Four Marines are ready to go. There is the pull. Light sending it across the map. He's going to have six SCVs with his army. His uh, Marines going to be backed up shortly by a Vulture here. This is some great micro. Wow, best loses that. Zealot so quickly to start things off here. And what does he have back at home? He's got one zealot. One singular zealot. Looks like Best just going to pull all his probes back. Does not want any part of this fight. He is ready to dive, however, if Best decide or if, if Light, excuse me, decides to run up the ramp. He will be ready to 
uh, take that fight. Now sending his probes back to work and like to send his probes or his SCVs back to work as well. All right, here we go. Like going to try to break this ramp. This is insane. Um, this is such a tight ramp here because of those two eggs. Here comes the probes as well. That's a little bit too much here for Light to take on. He's still going to try to do it, though. This is crazy. Uh, here comes the probes. They're actually going to drill through the eggs, so not actually getting on top of any of these units here. And he picks off a couple of probes and just going to send his SCVs back home. So I guess Light trying to bait out some probes to get a few kills. Seemed all right. Light going to throw down his command center now and try to delay this as much as possible. The uh, resetting up of the Nexus on best side of the map. Bring some mines out here as well. So again, delay tactics from Light are going to pay off. Like he will find this. Wait a second. Oh my God, that probe. I can't believe Light was even over there in the first place, but he ends up not finding that probe, which is crazy. I don't know why he was over there, but it, it feels like he really was suspecting a probe out on the map. Just wasn't lucky enough to find it there. Now he is going to load up a couple of Dragoons. There are mines over here. So could absolutely lose some of these Dragoons. Um, if he tries to run forward with those. Now, bringing the Dragoons back inside, I'm not sure what all that was about, but it seemed like he was thinking about perhaps flanking whatever was down here. Does cancel those plans, however, and just going to throw down the Nexus instead. This Marine. Very weird positioning there. What the hell am I looking at? Two observatories. All right, Best might be playing a little bit on tilt here. I'm surprised, though, because, I mean, yeah, that must have been a misclick there. That's pretty funny. Looks like a Nexus in the center. Hold on. Best. Taking his third Nexus in the middle of the map right now. Did he drop off a probe with the uh, observer there? That's very funny. Light actually sending his... Starport up to the top right. These guys are going crazy right now. Uh, this is pretty wild. Um, I don't know what the point of flying that out there is. He actually canceled the add-on as well. Okay, I guess the observer is not going to find that. So maybe going to pay off here for light. Um, best. He might not expect that a dropship would be out on the map and skimp on defenses for that central base so light might be able to get a free kill on that we'll see how that ends up panning out but this is already a wacky wacky game here oh man i hate that so much look at this pro pathing oh my god that pro pathing is disgusting You're wasting so much time running back and forth there rather than getting to mining that is super super frustrating um happens on several of these maps i feel like that should be a prerequisite to getting a map set up Ooh, he is gonna find this yeah getting a map in the asl you should at bare minimum have to get your map uh, so that your probes can transfer easily between your main and natural. Um, ju that's just my opinion. Looks like the drop going to happen here. Light actually going to get this drop off and there is nowhere for these probes to go. Every single probe going to go down here. A couple of cannons in this location would have saved this, but Best had no idea about the existence of that starport. Oh man. So many probes going down here. Finally, the Reaver does arrive. We'll save the remaining probes here, but only three left over. That's brutal. Oh, and a wraith. Oh my gosh, a wraith as well. That is ridiculous. This wraith going to pick off the shuttle. 
just as it gets speed as well. Oh my goodness, that is so unfortunate for Best. He just got that speed upgrade. Now he's going to lose this Reaver to a singular Wraith. There is another shuttle coming up. Maybe he can save this, actually. Yeah, it looks like he will. Like, going to be forced back. This is, uh, <laughs> this is a pretty uh, clowny game so far, guys. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure exactly who's ahead right now. I guess I'm going to put Light in, a, in an advantage here. He's even going to pick off this Observer, so that's pretty darn good. Um, he's got that third CC. Just hanging out there, floating. Another dive in here, natural. Take some damage. Looks like Best not really reacting, man. Best must be off his game today, dude. Building two observatories. Yeah, that's about it. I guess that's the only thing. Not having those dragoons in the way to block a run by him. He doesn't even have a pylon wall or anything like that. Just eating damage. And losing a lot of probes. Really unfortunate for this Protoss player. He's going to have a very hard time holding lights attack when it does come i think light gonna take that third here very soon he is ahead in supply right now and it just gets worse from here for best he does have two reavers though two reavers can make a lot of magic happen in this matchup if the terran player doesn't move out perfectly a couple of good hits with the reavers can kill a lot of tanks or vultures or goliaths all things are possible when reavers are involved does eat a tank shot there so not the greatest so far but he is delaying this push out light not gonna make any mistakes just yet here gonna carefully move his tanks forward Staying out of range of those Reavers, but making sure to pressure these units back. Now making a quick jump here towards the south. Wants to take that base as quickly as possible. Light being absolutely methodical with his push towards this third here. So much patience being displayed by our Terran player. He finally lands that base. We'll begin to pump up his economy here. As he pushes forward. Another base being set up by Best as well. We haven't seen any transition just yet from Best. Does he want to switch things up? It looks like he just wants to play that very common uh, speed shuttle style. He's got a ton of zealots ready here. That lets us know that he's thinking about doing some sort of bust in the near future. There's not much purpose in producing this many zealots and all of these shuttles as well to just uh, try to do a defensive play here he really wants to trade out some of his zealots dragoons for these tanks oh a big dive into the main here actually that reaver taking a lot of damage he needs to pick that up once again oh goodness that shuttle's getting very very low he drops the reavers off behind the mineral patches but uh, this uh, Scarab going to have a very hard time connecting on anything. He does get a couple of vultures, but that is all he will get for now. A drop in the main. Best taking even more damage light during all the confusion, getting a whole bunch more probes. Oh, that just barely gets away as well. Wow. Light just too good. Okay, he loses that drop ship. Finally, the attacking is over. But in the end, I think Light comes out the better for this. 
He's getting his upgrades right now. He has tons of mines in his base. He's just very well protected. He's unseaging everything. He's ready to go. 150 supply to 167. I think this supply count definitely favors light here. Even though numerically it looks to be good for best. Light is going to get into a nice position here just outside of the natural. This is a very tight location to push through as well. Everything going to be clumped right up on top of each other. But of course, there are some great opportunities for Storm here. Huge Storm in the middle there, but no more Storms to be had. Zealots jumping right on top of these tanks, but the Dragoons just explode in the background. Light doing perfect job of targeting with those tanks on the dragoons and then unseaging the moment the dragoons get out of range to just deal that final damage to these zealots clean them up he's pushing for the win right now best on his last legs pushing back into his own natural like just gonna siege up here in this choke point where all of the rallies are set for best he's gonna have to reset those rallies it's gonna be a lot of used apm here no anti-air just now for light could end up losing some tanks to uh, zealot bombs actually we do now see some turrets being set up we've got some goliaths joining the fray of course there is that wraith as well dropping those zealots out nothing doing gg is called best taps out and light takes another victory well, 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 if it isn't Queen versus Light on Metaverse. Got a nice cross map game going here. Light in the top left. Queen in the bottom right. He's starting off with a 12 hatch. And Light going to get his wall in, as you do on this map. A cool new map. Looking forward to seeing a big macro game here between these two behemoth level players looks like queen really droning up here going straight to 13. he will grab his spawning pool and his gas immediately after that is a risky play going all the way up to 13 before dropping your spawning pool if there is an eight racks on the map I've seen it before you can die real quick so i think it was action versus light i believe or action underestimated light thought that he wouldn't go for that eight racks and ended up getting punished quite badly so queen makes the same move this uh, except he gets away with it just the way that StarCraft goes sometimes. And we've got Queen. The drone. Oh, I think a missed shot there from one of those Marines. I think the right Marine didn't actually fire there the first time. He was trying to stutter step forward to get that final shot, but not able to get it. Queen will escape with that drone. It's a nice save for him. Keep that alive. And no third base just yet from Queen, so breaking the trend we've had here lately of that early third base take from our Zerg players. Now, this is an interesting map in that there is that back base, that island base uh, at the 3 o'clock position that should net Zerg an easy third guess. Now, a little bit curious where Queen wants to expand to first. Does he want to take one of the main bases at the bottom left or top right? Or does he want to try and snag that island base? We'll see here as the game develops now. The third hatch in main for Queen. He's going for a three hatch build here. Gets his spire down. Back at home for light. No second barracks just yet. So... Going for a very quick upgrade build here. Very low, low marine count here in the early game. So not much opportunity to punish Queen for being greedy at all. Instead, he's just going to 
Play a conservative game here. Get all of his upgrades out quickly as possible. And then have a nice mid-game pressure timing here. So we'll see how these two builds match up with each other. It's not very common that we see what looks like going to be an early plus one into five racks from light going up against a three hatch play from queen there now what is the Terran sort of push and base uh, placement here for the third base I'm not really sure if you want to snag the island base behind this he's not mining that out yet he's getting ready for looks like a two hatch timing he doesn't know about that third hatch so light's gonna have his turrets up a little bit er too early he doesn't actually know what the timing is on these muta so um you know, making sure that he doesn't die in case it was a an aggressive two hatch play not the end of the world but it does slow him down a little bit now moving out with these marines he's got to be very careful and his marine count is quite low right now he does have quite a few barracks to follow this up but if he loses these early marines he could lose a lot of pressure on the map he needs to keep these alive and try to keep queen out of his main as well there's a great place to engage here but this is not uh, really threatening to queen having this marine medic group just sitting here on his ramp I don't think that Queen's going to feel very afraid of a quick counterattack from Light from this position. So Light's going to go out on the map. He already scanned top right. He sees that third base has been placed. Going to move towards that and force Queen away from his main base. Queen keeping a tabs on that army. Loses a couple of links just to get that vision. Now he can start to dog these marines. This is a very small marine medic force, so I think Queen should be able to, in just a few more seconds here, overwhelm with Ling, Muta, and take out this small bio force. You can see all the links coming up from the south here, getting ready for this surround maneuver. That is a ton of links. Like gonna run up this ramp right now. Unfortunate that Queen wasn't at that ramp to uh, control as these Marines move up the ramp. Instead, he's gonna fight from the low ground here, using the links to soak a bit of damage. Marines are now up on that high ground, so it's gonna be hard to engage with the links here. It's like he's just going to have to take them out little bit by little bit with the uh, Muta. is actually a bit of miscontrol there by Light. And now Queen just dives directly on top of this Marine Medic group. Picks it off. And he's looking very, very good in this game right now. That third base gas going to start mining here right away. And a Queen's Nest pops down immediately along with Evolution Chamber. So Queen not hesitating to immediately transition after taking that win after crushing that force out in the map that first bio ball he's gonna go straight up to hive and rush to defiler here so he can take his fourth base and extend this game take it into a nice long late game where queen feels very comfortable of course light one of the best in the late game ZVT, another group of Marine Medic going to get surrounded here. Two groups of Muta diving on that. The Mutalist group is just too big right now. That's 11 Mutas, 12 Mutas in that group. A f quite a few did get picked off, but it's totally worth it to uh, eliminate Light's presence on the map. Just killing all of those Marines is super good right now. Supply Depot about to die here. 10 health left on that. Is he going to get a repair? No, he does end up losing that. 
another blow here to Light, who's trapped completely in his base, just waiting for that uh, science vessel to come out while Queen is jetting forward here, getting started with mining on that uh, mineral patch in the natural as well. He will pretty quickly open up that pathway and allow himself to snag that base in the center right now. Queen taking his first few lurkers, getting aggressive here, heading out on the map. He's not playing coyly uh, behind his lurkers on the ramp. Instead, he's coming straight over here towards the natural of light. Going to bait out some irradiates here. Of course, those lurkers will just die. The sacrifice he's willing to make. Defiler is on the way here, so... Just needs to hang on a little bit longer. We're going to take his fourth now. Get that fourth gas going, and he should be able to transition into Ultralisk from this point. Now, Light is going to try and throw a wrench into those plants by setting out a dropship here, but Overlord... Already in position. Oh my goodness, that's so good for Queen. He's going to take out both of those dropships. These Marines are sacrificial at this point. That was beautiful, man. Queen just all over this guy. He completely outplayed Light there. Knew his style perfectly. Countered it. Exactly. Destroys those dropships, and now he is light years ahead here. Light, I don't think he has a chance at this point. He can't make headway either at the natural of Queen or at that third base. And Queen just going to carve for himself a huge chunk of the map on the right hand side of this map called metaverse here he's just gonna snag all the bases on the right hand side of the mini map here that's five bases that queen currently has control over he's gonna take out these units in the bottom left as well S stop this command center from going down lights progress going to be stopped once again oh wait a second he doesn't actually see that okay no he does dive on that with the links these marines not going to be there in time to save the command center unfortunately oh a science vessel out in the middle of nowhere he doesn't have energy and loses that what the heck is that science vessel doing there lurkers moving forward there's about to be a defiler here as well Queen, just a few more seconds and you should have the Defiler uh, ready and present with the Consume upgrade done. Looks like so far he doesn't have that, but he's got so many Lurkers coming down here. His gas level is insane. Still 800 gas in the bank. Hidden Command Center there. Light trying to get cheeky and try to get that Command Center down if he can. Desperation really you can see from Light's play. Usually he wouldn't do something like that. But he really doesn't have a choice at this point. The natural about to be under siege here. The filers are ready though. Lurkers popping through the Nidus as well. Gonna be able to shoot down that defiler, but loses his science vessel in the process. Queen just so ahead right now. It's really hard to imagine a light victory from this situation. Plague is ready as well. He th drops a plague, not the best, but it's okay. Getting a whole ton of defenses at that fifth base because the moment he gets that fifth base gas running, he is going to be so incredibly far ahead. It will be amazing. Light is just going to get run over here by insane amounts of Ultralisk in just a few minutes. Uh, Ultra's Cavern is on the way, so Ultra's upgrades going to be coming shortly. Defiler there with the Dark Swarm. 
can't be broken by light at this moment. He does have his third base up finally. But for how long? I think he is going to get overwhelmed long before that third base kicks in here. Queen already sending a ton of units towards that bottom left. He's still holding on to his base here in the top right as well with the defilers and lurkers. Keeping that alive so big right now considering he also has the center right mining at this point. Some more good plagues coming down. Damaging Light's army very badly. Like gonna try to uh, keep a presence in front of each location where Queen can emerge from his base, but it's incredibly hard to avoid plagues in a situation like this. Your Marines and Medics are all just kind of sitting out in the front. You're doing a lot of things in other parts of the map, so it's very hard to avoid potential plagues on those units. I would really like to see Queen in the upper right there just drop some plagues on those big groups of Marine Medic. Look at this. Where's the plague? There we go. Huge plague on all of these units, and they will get ripped apart immediately here by the Cracklings. Oh, Crack not quite done just yet. Should be finished here shortly. Some Scourge being thrown in. It's fine, though. Oh, looks like he doesn't actually have... Uh, Dark Storm for this. These lurkers just barely out in front, and there's no lurkers left over, but there's a lot of other stuff going on right now. Light not able to break that position just yet. He's worried about bottom left, actually. Queen taking some defilers, lings, and lurkers, and heading down to the bottom left. He should be able to deny this base with this push. Defilers should be more than enough here with those four lurkers. Yeah, he runs straight up here. Gets the burrow. These bunkers not going to help in the slightest. And that base gets crushed. Queen holding on with very little here. At the top left, nat or top right natural. There's a lot of fire bats being added on. Light is getting prepared to break this. He drops the D-Matrix. He's running in directly here for the Nidus. Nidus going to be taken out very quickly, but... Ultras are starting to pop here. Four armor ultras going to work on these units. There's no more Dark Swarm though. And that, uh, that D Matrix doing a lot of work here. But the simple fact is that Queen has an immense economy behind this army. So much is popping out right now. You can see him just dumping about a thousand gas probably purely into Ultralisk here. The moment those pop out and join this fight, he is going to completely overwhelm this army. He may end up losing the base here over in the top right. He may end up uh, taking some damage, possibly losing this Nidus here as well, but he's taking out bottom left. He's building a ton of Ultralisk right now with all the money that he's accumulated throughout this time. These D-Matrix is really helping out so much. Light somehow hanging on here. More D-Matrix going down. And the Ultras are really wasting a ton of their DPS on these uh, units here. This is crazy. Light starting to break through. It's close, but Ultras coming up from the south, they do have that speed now as well. Nidus Network here will be stopped. Light about to take out this base. I actually can't believe that Light is making this a game right now. This is crazy. These D-Matrix Marines still here fighting. That base does go down. A bunch of Radiates will come on these uh, Ultras as well. And finally, Queen punches through. Finishes off that army. Oh man, a ton of Lurkers here. Going to make their way into the natural with a... Uh, Defiler, that could pose a giant threat here to Light, who's already on uh, 
Already kind of in a rough position here. He doesn't have much. Ooh, a bit a quick run by here by Light in the bottom right. Going to be able to take out this base. I didn't even see this base, honestly. So much was going on in the top right. Oh, this lurk. This defiler. That defiler absolutely needs to live right now. Getting a little bit closer here, inching forward with the Defiler. And Lurker is going to throw down another Dark Swarm here right in the front. This is so annoying for Light right now. He's losing his army out on the map. And Queen changing his rallies right now straight over towards Light's natural. No more mining left for Light. Look at the uh, mineral patches here. GG. Light taps out, and Queen is victorious. Wow, a real back and forth there between these two legends. Gets a big old clapper from KZM. Already coming up next, Snow versus Queen. Snow here in the top right-hand corner. Queen in the top left. I forget the name of this map. I don't think it's Vermeer. It's that, uh, the clone, the, not fighting spirit, polypoid clone. Totally forgot the name. Sorry, guys. I'm losing it. Maybe it's Largo? No, no, no. Yeah? I guess it's Largo. Maybe. We'll see. Got Snow starting out here with the gateway. Queen, gonna go for a 12, <coughs> 12 hatch, excuse me. Sending out a drone scout as well. <coughs> Getting a nice quick pool after his hatchery, not gonna drone up at all. So should have lings out on the field. Right around the time this zealot makes it to his base. Hopefully he won't end up losing any drones, but of course that's the goal here for Snow. Gonna combine this probe with that zealot. Try to deal as much damage as possible. That's the endless back and forth. Look at this micro here. Whoa, queen trying to block that zealot a little bit. Just slow it down. He knows it's gonna be tight here. He knows it's going to be very close. He's trying to buy himself a little bit more time. That spawning pool finishes. And links do start. The Zealot already walking up the ramp here. Some good blocking there. So again, trying to slow that down. The links are about to pop out. Some good drifting here. Oh, drone does lose his life. Single drone dying already. That's pretty darn good here for snow. The second Zealot has arrived as well. This is a little scary. There's the Zealot going for another kill. Two drones have fallen already. That is brutal. Queen already uh, significantly disadvantaged here. Good job picking off that probe. He is going to get a good surround on this second Zealot as well. And an even better surround on this uh, first Zealot. Finishes that off. Barely losing any links at all. So making up for... At least in a small way here. His earlier mistakes with those drones. Now going to send the links straight across the map. We'll see what kind of pressure, kind of counter pressure he can do here. Because the shield battery has been thrown down. The forge is not done. There it is. Finishing up now. He can drop a cannon, but still a long way off here. This gateway could definitely end up going down. Four links already on top of that. Any misstep here from Snow could be deadly. Gonna go after that probe. Gateway is about to fall here. The cannon is getting close to finishing. There it is. The gateway goes down. He's gonna dive towards this cannon here. Surround on one zealot. Surround on that probe as well. But maybe, just maybe, Snow's bought in enough time here. Cannon will end up finishing up. And Queen will be pushed back. He's going to grab one more probe before exiting the scene. That Overlord, unfortunately, a little bit out of position. But it does manage to survive. 
And Snow, although he is on the back foot, I think he comes out on top in this situation. A lot of links were produced. What if you went down? And only a couple of probes were killed there, so Snow should be feeling good. Of course, that gateway did go down. Another zealot went down as well. And uh, these last two zealots are starting to head out on the map, man. If there was speed finishing up right now, I would be very scared as Snow. I just stand here in the third base. It would be nice if he could get the scout off on that, but I'm not sure this probe is actually headed towards the third. If it does head towards the third, that could be huge. Oh my god, it is heading towards the third, isn't it? It's going to find this Hydralis Den. That is massive. Queen not blocking that probe from making it over to the third. Big mistake there. Going to start to kill that shield battery. He wants to free up some space so that he can put more cannons down. He's going to need them for this Hydra bus that's coming up right now. Queen sending those Hydras straight across the map. Stopping to deal a little damage to that probe. But will start to cross the map here now. The goal, I think, is just to pick off the front couple of buildings. You can see the fourth base already going down here on the side of Queen. He's not going to commit or overcommit to this bust here. And I think that Snow has already kind of sniffed that out. He's only added on two cannons and he's already getting into his tech. So not making a full commitment here to this defense. There is speed here on these Hydras. Gonna have to kite back a little bit. Snow can do this over and over again to try and buy time for his plus one to finish. A few more Hydras arriving here. Can he actually hit that forge? I don't think so. Not without the cannon uh, firing on it. Those Hydralis, more Hydras popping out here. Is he going to actually try to dive for this? It didn't seem likely before with that fourth base coming down, but he sees only three cannons here, and I think that uh, Queen uh, may be feeling underestimated here. Still adding on more Hydras, sending them to the front. Is he going to run forward and bust this? He's getting prepared now as the uh, Hydralis range finishes up. Those Hydras become much more deadly. Will he dive forward here? No plus one. Plus one is denied. That second forge coming up now in the main. Will Queen be pulling the trigger here? He doesn't have many drones at that natural, man. That natural looking sparse. Only four cannons here. Zealot speed will be finishing up soon. A few more drones being added on. Okay, I don't think that Queen's going to try and bust this now. He's created a huge threat here at the front, but it looks like transitioning into some macro uh, play from this position. He will not dive forward here. Queen's just totally spread out. I've waited on bated breath here. Whether or not he's actually going to dive in and try to kill a cannon or not. Seems like he just wants to hang back and wait for these zealots to come out. Templars are done. But the storm is still a little ways off. Now finally droning up to maximum here. The fourth base already mining. So Queen. I think he'll get into a, a lurker upgrade here really soon. Quick Lurker upgrade would be great here. He already has four bases, so it's hard to defend purely with Hydras in this situation. You know that your opponent is pretty far away from getting Observers out as well. Maybe he wants to set up a contain here. But uh, honestly, Snow... I mean, man, Snow really has his gateways up early in this situation he didn't waste too much on cannons he's pretty much ready to move out high templars moving forward looking for that good storm it got a pretty decent one but nice dodge by queen this is so many hydras and the zealots are just melting because they don't have any upgrades at this point 
An armor upgrade would be huge here, of course. Attack would be awesome as well to cut through those links. The links really buying a lot of time for those Hydras. And the Hydra number wasn't reduced at all by that push out, but the Zealot number has been brought down. Still sitting here with just the five cannons, more and more being brought up by Queen. When is the Lurker upgrade going to finish? I think he's spending a little bit too long on just pure Hydra here. There's the Lurkers popping out. And this contain will now begin in earnest. Still no Overlord speed, but he's got great positioning on these Overlords. A fifth base going to come up now for Queen. My god, this man. Macro King over here. Tons of coverage all around the map. I just noticed that there's no Corsairs here, so he hasn't been able to really uh, uh, scout, the Z or scout the Zerg in the normal, natural way. He is mostly relying on intuition and those zealot move outs to figure out what has been going on on the map here. Now that TT drop going to be completely denied here. Pushed back by just a few Hydras. Queen going to track this down as best he can. Oh, Hydras popping out there. Going to get that kill real easily. And a couple of drones do go down. Three drones, in fact. But not nearly enough damage for what Snow needed. We also don't have a Spire just yet. Maybe adding on a Spire could be good here for Queen. I know that he needs to focus as much as he can on this defense, and that is a couple of additional Lurkers that could be made with that 200 gas. But um, having some Scourge here to pick off these Observers, it, it just makes it so hard for the Protoss player to move out. Coming forward as Snow attempts to break through this contain my goodness that's a lot of hydra so many hydras here in the front and it looks nearly impossible at this point for snow to break through this area there are just way too many hydras way too many lurkers present here now um and i i just don't know how the heck he ever gets out of this spot Queen, absolute macro king here. Getting his bases out so quickly. He's already sending drones to that fifth base. Adding on even more lurkers here. He's got that third gas mining nicely now. That fourth gas on the way now too. Diving forward with a whole bunch of Hydra and Ling. And just nothing that Snow can do about it. He's in such a cramped position here a lot of his dragons can't even really fire as these units run forward and start to hammer Protoss back into his main base he's killed almost all his cannons as well so he's got nothing to retreat to here snow just gonna lose that last cannon and the hydras are gonna continue to push forward there's so much behind this it does not matter if those go down I think getting into Hive now. Queen has a bunch of Lings joining this fight. Doesn't have the attack speed upgrade just yet. He will pick off that Observer. There's only one Observer now and no Storms here. So he's just going to keep pushing forward. The Zealots, the moment they move out to engage, getting hit by these Lurker Spines. Getting wrecked by these Lurkers here. The Hydras will continue to spill forward. Until this game has been forfeited by Snow. Another wave of Zealots gets eaten alive there. And the last storm, just as it comes out, gets cast to no avail. Queen just going to back off a little bit. Use those damaged Hydras to make more Lurkers. And then push forward for the win here. And I really feel for Snow in this position. He is getting completely crushed. Queen shoving in for the win here. Run forward with the Lurkers. 
stack them up. There is no threat from Storm here right now. Those two Templars get picked off. And the Hydra is just going to continue to push into this natural, finishing off the Dragoons. And the remainder of Snow's army will fall and die. GG. Snow taps out. Queen moves on. All right, I'm back. And on to our next map. It's going to be Polypoid. We'll be moving on to face off against Sharp in the top right-hand corner. Queen in the bottom right. Looks like we're going to have a 12 hatch out of him. And we'll see what Sharp brings to the table today. Starting off here with a barracks in base, which is a little bit weird. Considering how easy it is to get a barracks supply depot, supply depot wall at the front of this base location. So uh, I'm thinking maybe a 1-1-1 one, one, one build, maybe some sort of tech coming out of Sharp here. We'll see if that ends up happening. Ooh, Queen trying to block. It's a couple extra shots off on that SCV. Surprised he's still chasing this because he can't actually get the moving shot there. <clears throat> well, excuse me. Does send that back to work, so he's not going to go for the scout. He's discovered his opponent spawn in the top right hand corner with that overlord, so he's going to be fine here. You can see everything that's coming out. No need for a drone scout. He's going to continue to chase this SCV around. Some good micro from Sharp to break that uh, moving shot, but Queen getting it once again. Really focused up here. You can tell, man, he is on the top of his game. Gonna run this SCV down. Only 10 HP left, so we'll have to evacuate here. He's not gonna be able to get that back into the main base once again. Just not gonna happen, so I'm gonna send that home. And send out a new SCV to go ahead and scout things out. Let's see what kind of build Queen goes for here. I'm expecting potentially a quick third base here, but he's already grabbed his lair. He's already getting his gas. So actually a two hatch is seeming more likely by the second now. Like this second SCV will run on up possibly into the main here. He's going to pull another drone off. You don't typically see Zerg players pull their drones in order to chase SCVs in their early game, but Queen does seem seem partial to that. He seems to want to try to run those down. Now, Lings are out. There's the Spire. Two Hatch Muta on the way. The second gas should be thrown down here within the next couple of seconds. Just around 200 HP on that Spire. Looks like he throws it down slightly earlier than that. So a nice quick two hatch here. We'll block the ramp now. Make sure that SCV can't get in the main. But he does spot Lings being popped out here. So some good information for, for Sharp. He sees the drone saturation at the natural. And he can pretty much just expect that Mutas are going to be on the way here. Third base in the bottom left-hand corner. This is pretty typical for a two-hatch player. This is not going to be the biggest pressure build that you've ever seen. But Queen going to bring out a ton of Mutas. He's going to have six Mutas popping the moment that that Spire is done. And he's going to transition slowly over to Hydralis and Lurker, eventually into Defiler, uh, while pumping out just enough Mutas to keep himself safe to, to fight this Bioforce that's coming out on the map now. Looks like an SCV going to move around the right-hand side of the map. The Marines just making a little bit of space for that. Queen looks like he's prepared to intercept right now, but the SCV just barely slips by. It is actually spotted by the receding vision of these lings, and now he's going to follow up and catch that SCV. So, Sharp not going to get the scout that he wanted. It was a good attempt, though. Sharp popping out a couple of firebats. It looks like he's 
just about prepared to move out here. Those fire bats are really nice to keep in the natural just to protect your turrets and uh, defend against zergling runbys as you move out with your bioforce. But these turrets are very late here. Uh oh. Sharp just starting turrets in his main. He's got one up at least. Queen gonna dive in here and see what he can do. Only four mutas, not enough to deal much damage to these. Whoa, 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 that Firebat moving around the wrong side there. That was unfortunate. That Firebat should have run directly south, but he loses a turret for free there. That's no good. Ooh, one Marine headed all the way down to the bottom left. Looks like he might just get a drone. It's really close. No, the drone does escape. The mute is diving into the main now, stopping this factory here for a little bit. That's a great pickoff there for Queen. Does back away now. Like Ling's sitting out here in the middle. I don't know why they weren't sent down to the bottom right or down to the bottom left, excuse me, to defend those drones. But uh, finally, they are picked up by Queen. Gonna get them together and uh, spot this marine force that's moved out on the map. He's going after the turrets, trying to pick them off, but he spots this marine force. He will have to back away from this. Uh, he's trying to get a few more SEVs here before he does, but that marine force headed towards the bottom left is a big threat here. He needs to pull back immediately, get his, himself down to that bottom left as quickly as possible battling on the ramp here would be perfect for queen if he can get there in time it looks like he won't be able to though sharp headed down there right away he's gonna mount this ramp really quickly cancels the uh, sunken colony so not gonna finish in time and the marines are on the top of the ramp now things become very tough for queen nice pick off there on the medic gonna make things a little easier two medics get picked off so only one medic remaining that's a little bit rough for sharp those marines are not going to last as long they've already stimmed a couple of times so these glaives are going to be wreaking havoc here on these marines and the ling follow-up just completely crushes this army those pickups on the medics were so big there sharp got up that ramp he did everything correctly but queen moved perfectly around that army picking off those medics going after those high value targets not allowing this marine medic to have any sustain as it stimmed up repeatedly it became so weak and he just picks that off easily and now he's in a great position queen gonna start mining off of that gas down in the bottom left he didn't lose any drones during all of that just some health on the hatchery which is always pr just amazing for the zerg player now i'm gonna dive in here with some lings quick counter attack here from queen the moment that these marine medics start to move out now he's in the natural and the main base with some lings but he has to send the mutilus back home if he gets broken here in the natural he could absolutely still lose this game bringing back these mutas doing a great job picking off a bunch of the marines here but more importantly, buying time for these three sunken colonies to finish. Those sunkens are done now. I think he will be able to hold on here at the natural. But Sharp, conversely, he holds the Ling pressure there in his own natural. Keeps himself alive. And uh, this game will progress. We're going to get a nice long game here, guys. It's been a disappointing week of ASL, but at least we're getting a great ZVT here with sharp versus queen this is going to go long so far nobody is at a serious advantage i would say slight advantage here to queen but there's still plenty of play here for sharp he's gone directly into vessels he hasn't gone for any crazy drops or anything like that he's just going to play it out in a straight up macro game against the bees against queen Takes a lot of balls to do something like that, but Sharp. This man doesn't give a fuck, man. He is crazy. One of our most aggressive Terran players, aside from Rush. He has the skills to take down even the best Zerg players in the world. And Queen, he's not the best Zerg player anymore. 
There is a time I would have said he was definitely the best in the world, but it's not now. Queen has been on the decline recently. And this is an excellent irradiate. Great split, though. Queen, amazing split there. Getting his damage or that irradiated mutilus out of the stack as quickly as humanly possible. Now throwing down his hive tech, he's got a couple of um, tech buildings going down there, the defilers, an ultralisk tech building, and two dropships have just popped out, so looks like Sharp is going to go for a wild play here after getting two uh, science vessels first, so this might throw Queen off, you know? A lot of times when someone like Sharp plans to go for dropships, they're going to go into the dropships immediately. They won't go into uh, science vessels until later. So this might come as a complete surprise to uh, Queen here. He's headed down towards the bottom left. There is a Nidus Canal. Only one lurker there. Oh my god. One? Just one lurker at that ramp? That's crazy. Queen saving up quite a bit of his gas. He's got 900 in the bank. This might come to bite him in the butt, though. Here we go. Fire bats plus Marines going to focus down this Nidus network right away. Only one lurker pops through, and you know there's only one other lurker present here in this base. The scan goes down. He kills that lurker. He kills the defiler as well, and now all he has to do is deal with these mutas. He's losing, unfortunately, his dropships, but the irradiates are here. Two irradiates go down. The split is pretty good, but still taking a lot of damage there. Oh, Queen, he doesn't split very well. Uh, after that initial split, he ends up losing a lot of health off of those mutas. And GG! Sharp with the surprise drop. Takes down Queen. Knocking him out of this week of KCM. All right, let's keep it going. Let's uh, get on to our next game here. We got Jadong versus Sharp. Cross map this time, so we get a nice long game here. Not that that wasn't fun, but yeah, it was pretty fun. I like the way Sharp won that game. Um, just pure aggression, man. That's what he's known for. That's what he does best. So I love to see it. Sharp taking a game off of Queen. I feel like that would have been unthinkable two years ago that uh, Sharp could defeat Queen. Um, not unthinkable, but uh, just really, really unlikely. And uh, now it's possible, man. And it just happened. So. The tides change quickly, you know, the, the metagame shifts, the, I mean, that wasn't a crazy new map or anything like that either. That was, that was straight up polypoid, man, and he managed to take him down. So props to Sharp, dude, keep it on top of things. He has always been a contender. He has never really been uh, sitting at the top, but um, he's always been one of those guys, man. He brings out the wild style he brings out the kind of crazy aggression and um and i love to see it man you love to see a terran player who can uh, put on the pressure so looks like he's gonna skip his second marine here and go straight into a second barracks so pretty dangerous start here very, very low on Marines, but he's already seen what's going on in Jadong's base. He knows he can get away with this. He's got the SCV here. He can loop back around again if he wishes. But only two links were made, so, you know. Good optimization here by Sharp, even putting down a supply depot instead of that bunker. So, cutting all the corners here in order to get a little bit of an advantage over Jadong in this best of one. Jadong sending his first overlord around all the way to the right-hand side, making sure that's not going to be picked off by anything. 
And he's going to leave his second overlord at an opportunity, or a, a nice little a view spot there in the middle of the map. This is, of course, Vermeer. That brand new map with a ton of ramps all the way around it. Kind of a... Interesting symbol. I guess it was made by AMD or something like that, or they had it made. They paid for it to be made. Oh! Oh man, I really thought he was going to be able to block that with the drone, but he doesn't get the block off, and now Sharp knows everything about Jadong's build here. It is rough. Jadong, of course, needs no introduction. I talked a lot about Sharp already, but I know this is one of your guys' favorite players, Jadong has just come back now that Sharp has left. Oh, excuse me, that Flash has left. I was just looking at Sharp almost picking off that Overlord. Jadong pauses his Overlord just for a moment. Just long enough to, for those Marines to pass, and now he's going to cross uh, over towards that natural. That is crazy. The timing on that is, is really wild, but Jadong... He's on the retreat right now. There's two medics and a whole bunch of marines stimming up and running here. There's not really any medics with this. And if he brings the drones out and surrounds, he could actually kill all these marines. That was really close. He almost got them. This sunken colony loses about 50 HP when it spawns. So it spawns with just 30 HP. That's really rough here. He's going to lose that. First couple mutas are out. The uh, Marines are going to try to run behind this uh, mineral patch, but there's a few too many lings here, and those mutas manage to finish everything off. No drones are killed, and Jadong holds beautifully. Nice job by him. As I was saying earlier, he came back just as Flash left the scene. I wonder if that was planned, honestly. Feels like it might have been... The two of them were long-time rivals uh, in MSL OSL days. And then Jadong went away to the military. And the moment that Jadong, or um, excuse me, that Flash goes into the military, Jadong is back. So um, it's his time to shine, man. This is the moment here. This is the time for Jadong. You know, he's in the ASL. He's trying his best. Uh, if he can actually win one. I mean, this is this is the moment to do it, man. When Flash is out, Jadong's time to shine. I feel like Jadong would have so many MSL OSL championships if it wasn't for that one Terran player. If it wasn't for Flash, who managed to snag them all away, he would have had so many accolades in this sport. But as it stands, I mean, he's still got a... A long way to go to catch up to someone like Flash. Though he, his skill is seriously high. He, he's always been such a pinnacle Zerg player. So, um, again, this is his opportunity. And this is a, a nice place for us to see how his skill has developed. How his skill is doing after being in the military for a long time. Is he still on the top of his game? He's looking very good. Especially against a player who just beat out Queen. Who is a great player in his own right. AK is zero, who's also an MSL OSL player from back in the day. But Jadong, I mean, let's see what he can do here. He's dropping a Queen's Nest and a Hydra Den. This is going to be the transition. He already killed that first Marine Medic group. So he's got a lot more out on the map than his opponent. He knows that. Sharp not really able to move out just yet. He needs to get to his next level of tech, so he's quickly teching up here. Trying to hold back the Mutas, trying to defend against that. He's finally added that bunker on, so he does have a nice position there at the natural. Double starport is coming down now. That third base just finishing up for Jadong, so he's going to get that gas running here very quickly. Still a long way off of that fourth gas. So, Jadong going to keep putting this pressure on for now. In the moment that the Terran player gets his irradiates out on the map, the tension in this game, the, the pressure in this game is going to completely shift. 
Zerg is going to have to fall all the way back and focus on defense while getting into the next level of tech. But for now, he's still able to harass here. Picking off that medic is pretty good. He's going to kill all of these marines as well and jump on top of this turret. Now he has an opening in the natural. He could dive into the natural and try to kill this bunker now with the Lynx and uh, Mutilus in conjunction. We'll see if he decides to do that. Drawing the marines back here into the base. Killing off quite a few of them. The Mutilus control is insane right here. Jadong known for that. Looks like we have Evo Chamber started already for Jadong. Getting prepared to transition. Getting prepared for that Ultralist late game. Going to start his armor upgrades here early. And he's put on just so much pressure. You can see how many Marines are out on the map right now. That's continuous four barracks production for a very long time, but only about 10 Marines have survived this aggression from Jadong. So Sharp in a really bad way right now. He is going to have to pull off something amazing here if he wants to win this game. Possibly another crazy drop like that last game. Um, but I'm not sure if that, that will even work in this situation. He might have to drag this out into a later game. Try to just prevent Jadong from grabbing that fourth. We'll see. He's chasing these Mutalists around the map. They're already split, pre-split here. So it should be an easy pull away for Jadong, okay? Not the best. Did end up taking a lot of damage from that Irradiate, but... Quite a few of those Mutalists were not in the stack, so he keeps a lot of them at high HP. Time to go on drop defense here, I think, for Jadong. Unless he wants to try and surround this army, he's going around it. Or now just kind of uh, subverting this army. Going behind, he's headed towards the natural here. He might be able to pick up... Ooh! Does get a science vessel. That is a huge pick. But he might be able to pick off some reinforcing units. He's going after this... Vessel, ooh, very nice. Gets a vessel there. There is a dropship popping out as well. So Jadong knows the plan. He's 100% up on this now. He knows exactly what's coming. Defensive matrix being used. Jadong, will he pay attention here? Oh my god, he's not paying attention. Okay, he does send through a bunch of units though. You, you have to retarget your lurkers onto the other... Marines there. The Marines that are trying to come up the ramp. You can't just fire at the D-Matrix Marine. Otherwise, you will just lose that fight. So, Sharp does get a couple of Lurkers. But he's not going to get much more than that. He has a dropship as well. And he's taking a third base. Now, Jadong is completely defended here. Except against drops. The only way to get into any of his bases right now. Is through those drops. Scourge are ready though. And he's already spotted this out, so... Scourge head down towards that dropship, but... Marines are in position. He knows now that uh, this is probably not going to happen, but he's still going to go for it. Here he comes. Oh, another science vessel goes down, but the dropship makes it in. He's going to get a bunch of fire bats inside the main here. Oh, but the uh, dropship gets picked off. Lurkers burrow and everything's getting wiped out here. Sharp manages to keep three Marines alive, but that's it. Everything gets taken out. And Sharp has been completely repelled. Jadong takes his fourth base easily now. No contest on that fourth base. Sharp just gonna back off here and take his own third. This is not looking good. Does he have at least two engineering base that would be nice to see gotta keep up in upgrades in this situation a fourth base on the way here sharp without much uh, defense around that though he really doesn't have anything up here to try and keep that alive and Jadong is fully aware that that base is being taken um some bunkers here with nothing inside gonna get loaded up though that's nice. Keeping this alive. Uh, Mutalus is going to dive here into the main. Stop this factory. 
I think a uh, mech transition might be coming out of Sharp. He was thinking about it, man. That second factory. Oh no, that was a that was a uh, uh, fresh factory. Oh, oh, oh god, the plague! Plague goes down. Oh man, Sharp's army gets baited into those uh, lurkers as well. Yeah, his factory actually went down across the map, so he's rebuilding that factory. Possibly to build some more starports, get into some um, battle cruisers, but there's also, of course, the possibility of getting into a mech transition that used to be a really uh, common play. It kind of fell away, but it's still very, very strong. We've even seen it used in the ASL um, very recently. They're going to run away from this. Defiler, try not to get plagued here. At least not a good one, anyway. He does throw down the plague, but yeah, it's not that great. Firebats are gonna come forward, or not the plague, excuse me, Dark Swarm. And Firebats just gonna go ahead and take out those links. He can push forward once again. That's a lot of barracks, so no mech transition here. Out of sharp. Instead, he's just gonna focus on Marine Medic. No plague. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, Scourge. Trying to catch these couple of science vessels. The science vessel count is very low, though. Three science vessels with the main army. That is nothing at this point in the game. We're 15 and a half minutes in and only three science vessels. That is crazy. Jadong has done an amazing job of picking those off throughout this game. Sharp has his fourth base though, man. You can't count out a Terran player on four bases though. Four base Terran versus four base Zerg. There's a lot of play here for the Terran player. You can try to deny that fifth base. You can just keep his upgrades rolling. He should still be able to fight. It's like another science vessel going to go down. That's just been so many this game. He is avoiding most of the big plagues, though. Staying away from those as much as he can. He's going to be in real trouble, though, once Jadong spends this gas bank, though. He's got 1,300 gas. Just waiting for that ultraless transition. Um, the Lings, I think... Getting that crackling upgrade out very, very soon. He's already got two armor as well. Two armor is done. So uh, armor three should be on the way as well. We should have both uh, ultras upgrades on the way as well. We still have 1400 gas in the bank. And a fifth base is trying to come up. It does get denied though. Another location for the fifth just north of here will be stopped as well. Sharp. Probably going to get plagued right now. I have a feeling that it's about to happen. He does come up with the uh, Dark Swarm and the Defiler. Looking for that plague. Does not get it, though. And the base goes down. Oh, no. Plague on these battle cruisers, And he's going to be able to get a Dark Swarm down on this third base. Sharp. In a bad spot here. You cannot allow these bases... To get Dark Swarm on them. So many SCVs are going to end up going down here. He does come forward with the Fire Bats, but Mutilus plus Scourge kills the Battle Cruisers down here. That base forced to retreat there in the bottom right. That third base and Ultralis are now on the field. No speed just yet, but should be finished shortly. And that fifth armor be done here in just a moment that's gonna be super difficult for sharp to deal with even though he has a huge supply even though he's all over this map without the massive amount of science vessels oh my god is he gonna get another one okay thank goodness jadon wasn't able to get one more dark swarm down that would have delayed this third base for Ever, man, that would have been so long. He does manage to get that down. Wow, that's a lot of ultra. I think this game is about to end, guys. That is so many ultra running across the map right now. Jadong has a superior supply at this point. That is never a good sign. 
A few irradiates are going to go down here, but look at how small this marine force is. You need so many marines to fight this. He just does not have that massive number. He is going to take down a couple of these ultra. Forces them back. So not a bad first fight there for Sharp. I'm surprised actually that that like 10 ultra force wasn't able to take down the marines that Sharp managed to scrape together. But Sharp's doing a good job, man. He's got three star ports pumping out battle cruisers. He's got about eight or ten barracks just uh just rolling away right now that's a lot more ultra though he's gonna get a couple of irradiates down here does eat a plague on that battle cruiser but it's doing a good job holding things back keeping these uh science vessels alive is a job on its own try to stop those science vessels from going down just suck up some scourge Try to blast them down out of the sky before they engage with these science vessels. Unfortunately, though, going to lose a couple of the science vessels. So many ultras coming forward, man. That is crazy. No links to back them up, though. This is probably going to be GG regardless. Dark Swarm goes down. The science vessels all fall here. And he's going to go ahead and run directly into this base. Don't think he has another um, Dark Swarm, though. No more Dark Swarm here. And this uh, bunker positioning is pretty darn good. These Ultras not getting the best surface area. Sharp sending out a ton of fire beds and Marines here to try and save his base. But multiple attacks in multiple locations. Sharp is running out of gas here, running out of time. And GG is called... Sharp taps out, Jadong will go to the final game. On to our final game now. We've got Jadong versus Royal. Jadong in the bottom right hand corner. Royal up here in the top right. This should be a game to remember, man. A, definitely a game I've been looking forward to. These two players, I mean, this is like the old school versus the new school. Got Royal here. The best new Terran player aside from Rush, honestly. Uh, probably, maybe even better than Rush right now. Uh, if I'm... Uh, if I'm really thinking about it, I, I kind of like Royal better than Rush right now. Um, I know you guys might think that's blasphemous, but this guy has been showing so many good games in case KCM against the best players in the world. I think he just has some nerves uh, in the big tournaments like ASL. That might be why he's been struggling, but if he continues along this path, if he can keeps growing at the same pace, man, he is going to be such a monster here in the next couple of seasons. He's going to be amazing. So, looking forward to great things from him. Jadong, of course, needs no introduction. An absolute legend from the past. We'll see how he stacks up against this newer player. Can he take down Royal in this best of one? We are on butter, guys. And a third base is already down for Jadong. This has been so popular lately. I really love that Jadong is up on the meta he knows exactly what new players or what these players are thinking he knows the best new builds uh oh can't land here unfortunate we're losing some mining time because of uh that miss did he misplace that or what the heck happened there i'm not sure um but he had to relocate that uh, cc don't see that very often um yeah, it's cool to see Jadong on top of this metagame, man. He knows that uh, a lot of Zerg players are going for that early third base on these two-player maps. And, and uh, in general, it's been really popular. So he's already figured it out. He is going to play it out on this map here. A good time to uh, bust out the three-hatch build. Hydralist Den. Whoa. -ho -ho. What is he doing? A uh, 973 here? What the heck is going on? Looks like he's got layers, so we might be seeing a lurker bus here. I like it on this position because uh, Royal 
has a terrible wall in here, man. This is not a, a good wall in the uh, Marines pop out on the wrong side. And yeah, it's just just a dirty wall in there. So with the supply depots in the front, this is always going to do damage. So I like it a lot. Jadong is producing a ton of links. Looks like he wants to try to maybe surround this. And this is a great map for Lurker play, especially because of the way that it's uh, that it's kind of set up here. You have so many different pathways through the map that Really, it's very unlikely that Royal will move out and actually find Lurker eggs. Really, really unlikely here. So, um, the Lurkers of Jadong are going to be being built on the right-hand side. They're not actually started yet. Oh my god, wait a second. Royal is going to kill Jadong here 100%, dude. This is ridiculous. Okay, Royal is just going to walk in here. And Jadong is going to leave the game because he is completely screwed right now. Looks like the Ling's going to try to make a counterattack happen. A uh, bunch of uh, SCVs are going to run up the front here. He is going to break through, so Ling's are going to get in. But Royal is in the main right now, man. He's going to start killing this. Uh, he's going to start killing the lair here. He is going to kill so much and royal i mean back at home lurkers are at the wall they're gonna have to break through those supply depots before they can actually get in the wall but um the lurkers are there man can royal hold on here he's building some bunkers in his main wait a missile turret actually not a bunker he's killed the main he's killed all the tech uh, he's going to scan and hit with these uh, fire bats, but the fire bats are just trash against these lurkers. They all die. No marines are present, so he's just going to run his SCVs away. Marines pop out here. They're completely useless, though, against this. So um, just lifts everything off. He's going to run out the front lurker here, just going to wreck these SCVs. And uh, heading back home, Royal going to try to meet up with his SCVs. And then try to kill, I guess, these lurkers. He doesn't have any way to detect them, though. Which is a really big problem. Jadong, at least he's got one base mining right now. So uh, he can do something. He's trying to finish this upgrade, but it's going to get denied. That sucks. Huge denial there for... Jadong to pick off that uh, plus one upgrade. Looks like the command center floating over here to the third base, so we're going to relocate. This game has become so insane, actually. I thought that Jadong was just going to lose there, but uh, he's really done a great job keeping himself alive. These Marines just going to die. I don't know what the heck they were doing there. Every single unit here is so important. Really shocked that that actually went down. Now the academy is going to fall as well. Um, all that Jadong needs to do is just slowly move his way over to this base. And he should be able to take this game. Although Royal does manage to get a uh, scanner there. So with the scanner, that command center, maybe, maybe he can hold on. Oh, a lurker in the back. Oh my god, a six kill lurker in the back. There's no SCVs left over here. Hero lurker killing off so much over in this location, just massacring those SCVs while Royal is paying attention elsewhere. One SCV left. One. Scan comes down. He does finish off that lurker. But the rest of the lurker is going to run in here. Can he actually finish this game now? Jadong running forward. Just needs to one more time fight with these marines he tries to f oh god gg oh that was painful to watch jadong ripping his opponent apart with an incredibly incredibly aggressive lurker play gets the clapper from kcm as expected from the great jadong an excellent match to finish off this series what a crazy play. All right, guys, that's it for week number five of this season of KCM. Zerg pulling ahead a little bit here.
leaving Pronos in the dust at only three points. Most of their points earned in the first three weeks. They haven't earned a single point since then. Pretty rough stuff now. They still have a chance to come back here. There's still two more weeks left, but it's going to be a tough climb if they want to beat either Terran or Zerg this season. Otherwise, they'll have to go into those finals in the third place rank. That's never fun. You always want to be directly seated into those finals, although that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win. We've seen plenty of comebacks in that final game, so... That's going to be it, guys, for this week. KCM, I hope you enjoyed it a lot. If you did, leave a thumbs up on the video and a comment, of course, to bless the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate it greatly, guys. Hope you're having an excellent week. I'm going to go ahead and start casting the next week of KCM. I'm behind, boys. I am mad behind. I apologize for that. But, you know, times, times change. Things happen. Boy gets busy. We're going to try and keep with it, though. Thanks for tuning in, guys.